Welcome to episode 33 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast for sharing tips, apps, and gear for iPhone and iPad, along with related technologies that get us using iOS in fun, productive, and meaningful ways. I'm your host, Melissa Davis, and joining me as always is Dave Ginsberg. How are you, Dave? How are you doing? Well, What's I, happening? Oh, man, I'm back to school. Everybody's going to back to school everywhere else, yep. but we've been at it for almost a month now, so <laughs> yeah. All right. You guys start beginning of the uh, yeah, August. Yeah, we go back a lot earlier, but then we get out a lot earlier too. So we'll be done before. Um, let's see, uh, in May we'll be done just just almost about the end of May. Yeah, the most of the kids here started, I uh, believe, this week, if yeah. not last week. The teachers had to go back for. Uh, yeah, uh, teachers always have to go back, so I guess like the wifey had week to go back ahead, early. So. Yeah. Yep. Got to go back did. and get their classrooms ready and do all the prep and everything. And well, now she's our Facebook classroom, feeds so. <laughs> are full of back to school photos. I, I love it. It's fun. It's good stuff. Yeah. I always get the shock every year. You know, it 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 doesn't seem to amaze me how much people just it, they they seem to forget for some reason. So I yeah. post my back to school pictures in my feeds, and they're like, "Your kids are in school already." You know, they're like, "Wow, we don't have a while to go yet." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it is. So. Yeah, she 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 doesn't have a classroom other than she has a room, but uh, doesn't have that much prep. Is, so oh. that's a good, good thing being a English level learner, so right. teacher. So she's uh, mobile. She's a nomad, right? No, she has an office. Oh, she has okay. a classroom, I should say. Oh. So, but uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to uh, again thank my Potter for uh, co-hosting with me uh, in the last episode. Uh, we had a blast at the yeah, Apple like Michigan Avenue location. Uh, well, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a short and sweet episode, but we had some boats going by and lots of horns blowing. And uh, But we got to talk about uh, what happened at the uh, Apple Store. We'll still call it an Apple Store. I'm, I was <laughs> so insistent. Stuck on it. It's hard. <laughs> I, was so, I was so insistent on it when they told us this at the, when I was uh, the, when we were there at the Michigan Avenue location in Chicago. Um, that's, yeah, we're calling it uh, Apple Michigan Avenue or mm-hmm. Apple that's Deer Park Apple or whatever. <laughs> whatever the name of the store is, that's how they call it now. That, that's uh, they're, that's what, they're, what they're doing for their marketing. But uh, no, it was a lot of fun was had by all the apple user group that got to go out there they had a lot of fun and uh we uh we really uh it really was a it was a great time so what'd you guys learn was, about um well we had uh it was it was uh, ios 12 they talked about mojave they did, did some discussions about that and there was a lot of in-depth discussion about apple id i was tempted to talk oh. about it this episode but uh i held back because it's that's a pretty yeah that's, deep, that's deep, deep discussion especially since i had to prep for that and i didn't have time so yeah uh, but that, that could be on a future episode. Uh, yeah, we talk, I, it uh, will because I'm I have some things coming up in the near future that I have to deal with wrangling that stuff. So yeah, yeah. So uh, but uh, yeah, we wanted to talk uh, touch upon their productivity apps, but we ran out of time as I was it was a, but it was a, a full two hours and we were actually in their boardroom uh, at the Michigan Avenue location. So um, a real nice real nice place and of course it's a beautiful store. So uh, got to tour the place a little bit and. It's right on the riverfront in downtown Chicago, so uh, a lot of people enjoyed the the enjoyed the day. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, like you said, back to school. It's, uh, Apple User Group will be starting up back up here in a couple of weeks, so we got some top topics coming up for us as well. And I'm yeah, starting my, my iPhone, my, my local iPhone will be starting up. What's that? My local user group uh, came back. They had a hiatus because they were all at Backstock. <laughs> so yeah, they came well, back and gave us a nice presentation on it. And that was fun. I had major yeah. FOMO sitting there like, oh, I've been there. <laughs> I know those people. I could have been singing karaoke. Yeah, he was taking, uh, they were taking a lot of pictures, I noticed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got he to, likes, he I got likes to, to take pictures. Well, the yeah, the president, he's a professional photographer. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's his thing. So. Yeah, great presentation, and uh, yeah, like I said, major, nice. major FOMO, but uh, it's always good to see the familiar faces and see all my friends. Yep, no, it was uh, th- that was a lot of fun too. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're we're gonna be back uh, in September, and uh, we've got some good topics, and I'll be back doing my iPhone sig, and then of course we have the uh, the Apple announcement. More than likely, is going to happen. They, yeah, they say coming up in September. It's September twelfth. Looking like some new iPhones and uh, iOS 12, of course, will be out. Um, and uh, speaking of iOS 12, it's a good transition to jump right into it. Uh, talking about uh, beta, they're at beta 11, believe it or not. Yeah. So, uh, how many betas are there typically? Like, how how many have well, there been is, on average? This is the most ever. Really? Um, so they're really ironing out the wrinkles. They, they, in they it, huh? really want this this to be a, the the best experience ever. 
Um, now, if you our articles over on Nine to Five Mac um, uh, to talk about a lot of stuff or changes, a big long laundry list of stuff that they've made some changes to. One of the things that are notable is they had, of course, we're, we're, we're demonstrating uh, during uh, the WWDC was uh, the group FaceTime. It's going to be delayed. They're, they're, they they had some Still, bugs okay. because yep. there was a there was a bug in one of the betas that went from I believe it was from seven to eight so that uh, they they stopped uh, mm-hmm. releasing seven and eight came out or I think that's right or eight or nine but one one of them that's why there's so many of them I can't even keep track uh, and uh, so uh, uh, but uh, I've been running it on. Um, I've been running it on a six. It's running very fast. I'm impressed. I've seen some. You know, I, I follow a couple of the of the, the video bloggers on YouTube. Uh, everything Apple Pro. Uh, he, uh, he 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 was even demonstrating it on an iPhone 5s. And that's what my son know, has. Was, I'm looking forward to seeing. I'll be able to report uh, back on that. <laughs> it was uh, yeah. It was it was running uh, pretty pretty fast for the most part. I mean, you, know, you look at the benchmarks. Yeah, of course it's slow, but uh, uh, but. Uh, yeah, you know, overall, I mean, a lot, lot of little things. You you can look at the list over on the, the in the show notes from this link. Uh, we've been going through a lot of this stuff that uh, they've already talked about. Uh, uh, just subtle changes, subtle differences, uh, what what it looks like, but uh, very Less stable. Faster, more. It is a very it is a very stable release. Yeah, a lot of speed improvements. I mean, I think that that's what they were promised from last year. So. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty pleased and, uh, you know, I, I, I usually wait until towards the end when I know that the gold master GM is going to get released. I'll, I'll, then I'll, then I'll dive in and, mm-hmm. and, uh, get it. But, uh, but of course, you know, by that time the new iPhone will be out and I'll be already, uh, training mine in cause I'm on the, on the, the trading program. So, I mean, as um, much as I, uh, as much as I was looking forward to the new FaceTime features, I'm glad that they put the halt on it and that they're going to try to make it more polished before they release it. Because I think yeah. it would be really bad if they released it and it didn't work as expected. So good, good on them for, for waiting on that. I think that's a, well, a bold move. They found bugs, and then I think that's what that's what beta testing is for. And you know, if you have the public beta and you have the uh, developers beta, the developers were in. Le- beta 11 i haven't looked at uh, where the, the public one is they may have caught up usually they, they or they're usually like a one or two behind uh in the public beta so um, i think that they really have to get it right because i think that podcasters will eat them alive if they don't <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean the one thing they've done for sure is they've really improved the podcast app uh, and, the, and the apple podcast app so mm-hmm. Um, so that's, uh, that, that'll be improved for us. I mean, that's, I mean, you got to think about it. That's the, probably the most, uh, used app as far as, as far as podcasts go. Um, mm-hmm. cause you know, you look at our trends and that, that a lot of people are listening to us through their, through the Apple podcast app mm-hmm. because it's it tells right them the next episode's coming up and it's mm-hmm. there and they don't, I mean, as much as we've talked about all the podcasting apps out there, uh, that that's. Yeah, it's hard to re- hard to resist that that that's the well. I always yeah. I can't like not have it on my phone. I because I like to check it and I like to see how it looks when we publish yeah. our show notes and stuff. And you know, I do a lot of quality control and I like to check it and right. make sure it looks and sounds good and operates the way it's supposed to. So I always keep that on there, even though you know Castro is my favorite. So <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, no. It's uh, I definitely will say it, that's a that's a good that's a decent app out there. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that that's what's been going on with uh, iOS uh, 12. Uh, Watch OS uh, is out too. Watch OS 5, I think it is. Yep. And um, there also was rumors about uh, uh, Series 4 Watch is coming out. And I think so, uh, Watch OS 5, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think my Series 1 just made the cut. I think they lopped off the Series 0, the original one. Uh, we better double check that because the series zero was dropped off from um, this. Uh, do you have the series zero or zero series one? Series one, the one. Came, I think came series out zero actually dropped off a of four. I mean, I don't mm. think I think they ran into the road there, so I'm not sure. I would have to double, have to double check that to make sure, but uh, I can't see why they would uh, drop that one off. It's not that terribly old. Yeah, it's um, like really out there. A lot of people have them, so I'm hoping they'll keep it up to date for a little while longer. I mean, I realize it's getting long in the tooth. I can feel it. I can really feel the difference. It's it's starting to get oh, yeah. slower and a little bit laggy, and yeah, I'm kind of itching to yeah, upgrade my, it. <laughs> my wife has the Series 1, and the, the battery's already shot. I mean, it's not, it's not lasting very long, so... Hmm. Um, my battery so it, still lasts fine as long as I don't, you know, add stuff on it that's going to drain it. But so that hasn't yeah. been an issue. It's just that, you know, it's just slow to respond, I think. Yep. So, so that's all the beta stuff. But there, we got a lot of exciting things that'll be coming up soon to talk about. So uh, I'm looking forward to it and uh, the event and everything else, all that other fun. So it's, uh, we'll look forward to that for sure. Uh, another article caught my eye was uh, Apple, uh, 
Apple admits it doesn't. Its free iCloud storage isn't enough. Oh, what it's a surprise! Time. It's about time. Uh, but so they offered just a promotion. Okay, mm. it's a promotion. Whoopee! Mm. Uh, so they partnered with all the big four carriers, so T-Mobile, AT and T, Verizon, and Sprint, um, to offer 200 gigabytes of free iCloud storage for two months. Okay, just in time for the new iPhones. So mm-hmm. that means. So two months of you being able to get the free storage, and then uh, for the two months, and then then you go buy the new iPhone, and then of course you got to pay the two ninety nine a month, which I pay, and you have the one ter- two terabyte plans mm-hmm. for your family. So I mean, as far it's as I'm concerned, it's, it's worth, worth it. it. And I always, you know, recommended I always recommend to people to yeah. upgrade at least to at least to the ninety nine cent. I mean, a lot of the people that I work with really don't have such huge data needs just yet. They they really don't. So the fifty gigabyte plan is usually plenty enough for them. And for them, I mean, it's like a dollar and some change per month. So it's really right. nothing to to really you know get excited about. So I usually just recommend it. It's it's really just peace of mind. Just pay the monthly fee and and have the storage. I know that's probably not the best attitude to have because probably other other places offer a lot more. But I mean, you got to consider what you're getting with an iPhone and. It really right. is worth it to protect your data. And people don't realize just, you know, they start snapping pictures or they take videos or they take the, oops, I thought I was taking a picture, but it was actually a video pictures, you right. know, those. <laughs> and all that stuff just starts to add up. And you kind of have to make a choice. Either you're going to be really, really diligent and be a really responsible custodian of your data and your pictures and and everything that you amass over the time right. of your using you know being a, a digital citizen or you just don't want to be bothered with it and you don't really have the time to tinker with that stuff and so you pay <laughs> and you yep. you know you got to pay that it's kind of like a luxury to not have to think about it but i mean consider the fact that of all the hard work that you would have to do if you had to buy hard drives i mean those cost money too so sure. it's it's really i have found that paying for iCloud is really just a matter of it being a good value. It's a good value of a service. You get for what you get for the price for the additional service. I don't think the five gigabyte is good value. And I don't know that this promotion is really going to make a lot of people happy. And I I mean, to be honest, I think it's going to stir the pot. And I think a lot of people are going to grumble over it because it's a Band-Aid solution and people are going to get a new phone. They'll they'll have that Band-Aid for a little while to carry them over. And then, you know, it's really going to show them just how much storage they really need to buy. So let's let's stress shakes out. Let, let's stress that it's for new subscribers only. So yes. it's not like somebody who's just getting another phone and hey, let me get two months free while well, before I get my phone. So right. you have to be a you have to have a new account with that for with Apple for iCloud in order to get that. Uh, anyway, but I mean, even the fifty gig plan that they have for ninety nine cents a yeah, month like is, I said, it's, it's, is, it's is perfectly it. fine for most people unless you have a I mean, in case your family you have a lot yeah, of like i'm managing stuff. a whole family so we really need the the larger of the two because there's you know multiple we have five family members just yeah you know we, you can have up to six so i mean it's right. it's a good deal for for everything that we do and so that my family members don't have to worry about plugging in drives and having to deal with all that kind of stuff and my dad like it's just something they don't have to think about right. so that is worth its weight in gold <laughs> right there there you go so uh and another topic we found on Mac Rumors, uh, Apple is offering a 30-minute one-on-one phone lesson on editing images with the Photos app, which I think is kind of cool. I know it's not a lot of time, 30 minutes, but to offer it to anybody who who uh, wants to do it, that's pretty cool. You, you go out to the support documents on that link uh, in uh, in the article, and you can schedule your session right from Apple's website. And then it looks like sessions are filling up quick. So, I mean, even just if you spend 30 minutes, I wouldn't. I would mind just take peek, peeking at it and see uh, see what uh, uh, what it uh, what it has all about all about, what it's all about just to see what they do you know yeah if I had time I um, would probably go in there and just you know kind of pretend I don't know anything and see what see what it is that they're teaching people be interesting oh I do it, I do it many times I go yeah, into yeah. the app in the Apple so the Apple Store and uh, uh, I've sat through a lot of sessions and the today at Apple is just a big thing right now with with them and that's that was some of the things that we thought they talked about with us so when I was at the Michigan Avenue store with uh, with the Apple group um, and I, I kind of molded the, our our sessions with uh, with the topics that, that they talk about so the Apple ID is one of their topics and uh, we didn't get to the productivity apps which I would have loved to have done to have been you know keynote numbers and, and pages but uh, 
Uh, but that time filled up pretty quick, and it's easy to do with a lot of different, other yeah. different topics and questions. Thirty and such, minutes so. is going to fly by, so I, yeah, I recommend I recommend to our listeners if you're going to go to one of these, I would write down your questions. You know, have a good you know main, main three questions that you want to ask them, uh, because yeah, thirty minutes is just not a lot of time, and right. you want to make sure that you get those questions answered. So write down your thoughts before you go in there, and and hopefully you can stay on task that way. Yeah, and a lot of the sessions that they do in stores uh, is uh, thirty minutes. So I mean, they, uh, you get uh, you know you get some of it out, some out of it. Uh, it's a good uh, introduction. Uh, it gets the juices flowing, yeah. and then it makes you think about other things that you want to learn about. So, but but free is free. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, other topic I want to talk about too was uh, T-Mobile, uh, which I'm actually been a pretty big fan of uh, as of late since I hey, switched careers. Switched. And um, unfortunately, they did have a, uh, a security breach. And uh, John Leisure, who was the CEO of uh, of T-Mobile, and, and you know, flat out didn't you know could almost said that he was very angry. I think he had more words than what he wrote in his uh, in the link we have to his letter to the customers. Now it's interesting that the, the breach was it says it was approximately 15 million people. Well, it wouldn't include me because I wasn't I wasn't a, a customer between September 1st, 2013, through September 16th, 2015. So. Okay. Um, it said uh, it said that everything was encrypted and, and you know it was good that they did that they took things very quickly and seriously with the with the breach. So, um, but they're they're offering free credit monitoring if it was if you were affected by that and um, and believe me he 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 re- they reacted to this quick very quickly. So yeah, that was the spin that I saw on another security uh, blogs that basically said that that was the right. there was one good thing that came of it is that they acted a lot quicker than most of the other data breaches that have happened. So they were on right. top of it and they let people know about it right away. And, you know, it's just, it's just another, another lesson in making sure that your stuff is secure and, and keep watching your, watching your transactions and checking your stuff yep. out. No, just, just be safe. And then, you know, we, yeah, you, know, you had some other articles we were looking at too. Is, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's so much to, to, to talk about on security all by itself with cyber and everything going on in this world with security. So, uh, yeah, just just be very vigilant, aware of what what goes on with your accounts. I'm like that. You're like that. And we're always watching closely to what uh, what things could happen with that. So now, when you switched over, since you're a recent new customer, when you signed up your account, you said that now they make it mandatory that you have to you ha- set up a PIN now. Yeah, you do have to have a PIN. So every time I call in or I go into the chat room, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, they say, oh, "What's your PIN?" Because mm-hmm. um, they won't let you get to, get to that information unless uh, mm-hmm. you verify verify who you are. So, um, and I think a lot of the carriers are following suit with that because they're realizing, you know, how yeah, easy it, used it is to be to, optional. And a lot yeah. of my uh, the people that I work with and family members, they're always you know kind of grumble over that. Oh, no, one more thing I have to yeah, I have to remember. You know, this, well, this world's got to be more secure. You got to do it. Yeah, you just have to. It's it's part of your responsibility as being a digital citizen. And you know, you if you drive a car, you're not just going to leave the keys in the ignition anymore, are you? Right, we used right. to do that too, didn't we? We there were well, there was a time when I people, did that, but <laughs> well, I I lived in a place where you know people did leave. It was a long time ago, but people did leave the keys in their ignition, yeah. or at least you know somewhere uh, close by, and they or they at least they just didn't lock their cars, or they didn't. There's people that didn't lock their houses at at one time, but that has changed now. Most people right. lock their doors, so this is kind of just like that. You just have to start locking your stuff down. And yep. it's it's a pain and it's an inconvenience, but consider the alternative. So well, just you want, something you got to do. You want to be cleaning up your you're cleaning up your credit and trying to figure out yep. what what's what. And yeah, go for it. Um, all right, so that was a lot of the topics of the news there was out there, and uh, let's uh, move into a couple of the topics we wanted to talk about this uh, this episode. Um, one of them was uh, T-Mobile. T-Mobile, again, I'm, I hate to be a fanboy. T-Mobile disclaimer: I'm a customer, but uh, you're wearing the pink socks, <laughs> uh, but, aren't you? But, but but I haven't gotten the pink socks yet. But I did I did get the pink uh, uh, little case that they were giving away last week. Uh, I went to the store and they had one left, and mm. I got the very last one. Lady behind me was mad because I got the last one. Oh my gosh! It was like a little pouch, you know, silly silly thing. But but it, the, I'll, I'll talk about that later with the T-Mobile Tuesdays. But um, but they the big announcement they did is they was was really they're they're really they're really trying to become the uncarrier and and become the 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 customer care that they don't that that they're not like everybody else with the IV, IVRs and the and the robots that uh, you and, and there's there's a, actually if you go to T-Mobile's homepage they've got uh, uh, they have a, a video showing uh, of 
someone uh, having to go through the frustration of going through the menu trees and trying to get to talk to a real person. So, um, so what they're calling it is a team of experts, and uh, and you get in touch with a dedicated staff that that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's available for you, and they, and they sign into different cities around the country. So in the case of in Chicago, where I'm at, I guess my my team of experts is in Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, I don't know where they came up with their decisions or where it was, but they had a big they had a big event last week in Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, talked about that and uh, and the changes that they they're making with uh, with that. Um, and um, I was very impressed with it because I you know when you go into the chat and on your on your phone because you you go into the T-Mobile app and uh, I didn't never found that I never found that to be easy when I was on AT and T when you wanted to have to chat with somebody to get to get help. So you always were given a runaround. So, and it it turned out that I was talking to uh, a couple of the same named people, and they were very helpful. One of the cows named still was her name was Emma, and uh, she was very helpful. And a lot of times I was trying to reach out to get things taken care of uh, for customer service. So uh, I was uh, pretty impressed with that. So. Uh, but they definitely, I agree that you got quick, responsive service, and people were helping, helpful, and uh, and you you didn't, uh, you 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 uh, definitely were, uh, you you felt like you were a real customer. So uh, they customer sound like their own line of geniuses, kind of like the Kinda. Apple Support app where you can chat with them. Yeah, I guess you could say that, but it's this. The thing is, it's it's people that you'll when you when, if you if you go. I mean, hope, hopefully you're not going in there that frequently. But <laughs> I was working on a problem, and I'm not going to get into details with. But uh, that I I I was going back and forth with her, and, uh, and she was she she. Uh, in fact, I remember what it was. It was like I, I will talk about that. I was um, when I was in Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, the service was really poor, and I said, uh, "Can you can you see why I'm having such a problem?" Because uh, the I was I, I I couldn't get text messages. Oh no. <clears throat> Uh, so I mean, you, I, I got them. Bars but, yet, right? And like one or two bars, it was weak. And but I, I mean, uh, people who were sending me SMS because I have friends or mm-hmm. that are sending messages that aren't on iMessage. Of course, right. iMessage works because right. it's on Wi-Fi or whatever. So or or, or, or it, it usually works. But you weren't getting works. SMSs. Yeah, SMSs weren't going through, or they would stall, or I would I would get failures, and they say, "Oh yeah, it looks like in the area they're having a problem in that certain spot," and because I was in a certain spot in the casino, and it was like what's the deal here? And then I would go outside and then everything was great. So, yeah. I mean, cause they've got very good coverage. So I mean, every the place, all the places I've been hasn't been an issue, but, uh, but we were talking back and forth. It's like, Oh, what are you doing in Vegas? Who's bringing you know, being kind of personable. And you know, it's not like you're going to talk to somebody like that. It was, I mean, granted, it was over chat, but, mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, but that, that's, it's a nice feeling it's that they the training now. To- yeah. Oh yeah. They're, 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 they're uh, trained to, they can, and just like anybody who works in customer service, I work in customer service, you know, you do, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what you have to do to to to, to you know uh, kill them with kindness. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but uh, no, very, very impressed with uh, what T Mobile has done so far with this with this program and uh, and uh, their app, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, uh, is, has gotten in, in much more improved as well. So, uh, definitely uh, definitely recommend uh, uh, the switch if you can, because um, uh, I just got so fed up with AT and T. I'm still pretty just, happy with them. I unfortunately T Mobile can't beat the. The price that AT and T gives us. So if they do, though, I, I might consider it because yeah. the coverage is about the same. It's it's not neither neither service has really great coverage where like in my house. So yeah. that would be something that I'd like to see if it was any different. But everywhere else, I have LTE and there's no problem. It's just yeah. in inside my house, it's really bad. But then again, I mean, I'm surrounded by you know where I live is in a valley, and sure. I'm surrounded by all kinds of tech. So who knows? I probably have. Something making me a Faraday cage and just don't know it. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, that, that I think that's enough to talk about with T-Mobile. And I'm I'm pleased with what they've sure? provided so far. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm very very pleased. And hey, they gave away free uh, Pandora this past week. You get yeah, a full, free year of Pandora Plus. So for is it a year? Just a year. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah, long but, time though. Yeah, you know, you get a full year subscription. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. It's just basically the, not the premium, the plus. So you just it's no, no commercials, and you can skip unlimited times, basically, mm-hmm. with Pandora. So anyway, uh, other topic I wanted to bring up was uh, the One Password. One Password's always been a program we've talked about a ton of times here on the show, and uh, I know we're both very big users of of the product, big, big fans, <laughs> and we're fans. And uh, I've I've always used the standalone product for many many years, and I and would go back and you know purchase the new version every year and I, I know you you have to wait uh, based on your budgets you, you don't mm-hmm. go right dive into the new version right away uh, but I did that and I, like I do normally and purchased it and then I turned around and I, I actually uh, you know I'm friendly with uh, one of the reps that's local in Chicago that uh, 
works for Agile Bits, uh, and uh, he's and we started talking about the the, the family's plan, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I you know what I think I really am t- tempted to do it because I want to. It makes it easier, and, and I know you and I talked about it before the show. You've got so many different multiple vaults, and you like to <laughs> sync it in Dropbox, and uh, and uh, but uh, but this this plan really 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 works, and it's it, it's it's five dollars a month, which is not too terribly expensive if you think about it. I mean, especially if you're they're going to be um, coming up with new versions every year. I mean, yeah, it's a subscription service just like you do with Office 365 or with Adobe Creative Cloud or any of these other programs. A um, couple of things you are going to get versus you you hosting it yourself is uh, you you get uh, unlimited passwords, which of course you you get with that anyway. But a gigabyte of uh, secure document storage, and then uh, you get you get apps across all of the platforms, including Windows. So you can go Mac, iOS, Windows, and Android, and they all they're all included. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, plus, I believe support's going to be 24-7, which is a little more limited as far as what you can get with the, the standalone version. But they're still offering the standalone version, so that doesn't change. I think it's uh, $50, something like that. I believe that's what it was. Um, uh, but uh, the nice thing is it's, it's, got, the, it's got the family's, uh, what they call the safe deposit box with a digital key. Very easy to, to, uh, to share across different uh Vaults, and I know you do that too. And you, but you have to tinker it. I mean, this mm-hmm. this is make, this is making it much easier to do. Um, and you can keep it personal. You you're you're able to protect everything across the way here. And you, um, when you're on the go, very easy to get your passwords. So I'm really what motivated me what motivated me to talk about this today was uh, again getting my wife on on board here because she's always looking for passwords. I, like, I got to get you on here. I want to get going. But then you know other other family members were were just. Uh, texting me today, say, "Hey, do you use one password?" I'm like, "Oh, well, hello, yeah." Mm-hmm. Uh, Have so, you not so, listened to our podcast? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, what's a podcast? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I really think that it, uh, it, it, it does a great job of, uh, of, uh, of, of doing it. So, as far as uh, keeping things secure, um, even, and I, and even I, w- I will recommend getting the subscription model. Even though I don't do it, you don't have to do you right. know, do as I do, do as I say, kind of a thing. Uh, I I have worked for many many years to have the kind of zen that I have with my one password situation, right. <laughs> but uh, I highly recommend just getting if you can if you can if you can stretch it if you can afford it I definitely re- recommend just paying the either the annual fee or the monthly fee and just having them take care of it for you. Right, you get a you get a sign in address so it's it's going to be your your family name dot one password dot com. So and it's registered to a specific email address. And then you have a secret key that that's stored, and it's called the emergency kit when you go in and, and uh, bring that uh, that document up. And then also it also gives you a QR code. So the QR code is secure, so no one can uh, get to it unless you show it to them or you send it to them securely. And the QR code, of course, if you use your iPhone, it, it, it's uh, it's very easy to uh, to scan it. You just uh, put your iPhone up to the to the to the QR code, and it'll automatically start setting up uh, One Password. And One Password is a free app that you download as an iOS uh, app, as well as uh, as a Mac. Yeah, uh, I really want to stress that the the apps are actually free. The software is free to install, and right. with One Password, at least on the iOS version, I know for certain you can download that that and install it for free. And then you just have a limit of how many things you can store. I think what I want to say, it's like what 20 passwords or something. It's, right. a, it's a really good way to preview it, to try it before you buy it. That's one one crucial thing that I always look for when I'm evaluating software. And and let me tell you, I'm re- like really, really super, super picky about stuff. I am really, really hesitant to invest in a third-party app because so many of them just come and go and they don't stick around very long. And I've been using password for like over a decade now, I think, or, or right. close to it. So, I mean, they've been around for a very long time. They're very committed to what they do. So it's something that I really trust and that I've I've put all my eggs in that basket. You know, I, I usually tinker with multiple versions of things and I've seen what other people have struggled with when it comes to other password managers. I won't really mention any by names just, just for sake of time, but I just don't see people having the kind of happiness and and having the good user experience that they have right. with those with those other versions. And I was like, I don't even want to bother. So it just hasn't it hasn't been worth my time to evaluate the other competitors because I'm just already happy with with one password, and I have been for a long, long time. 
Uh, and I've, I teach my kids how to use it. I teach all of my clients how to use it. I won't say it's a, it's a necessary requirement for me to work no. with a client, but it's definitely something that when I start with a new client, usually the first session I'll mention it and then other sessions, I try not to be too pushy because I really, really don't like sales. I'm not a sale, salesperson. Uh, and I don't like to sell people on stuff, but I usually, I, I keep the demo vaults installed on my devices. I always show it to them. And once I show them what it can do, the software right. usually sells itself. So I don't really yeah, exactly. have to work too hard at it to, to, and to make sure that it ends up on their machines. And the way that I explain it to them and the way that you can talk to your family members about this is what I recommend is, you know, this is a type of product that helps me help you. So like, for example, especially like when I work with my clients, once I, I could sit down at someone's machine and they could unlock their, their vault, you know, keep it so that when it's, when you're viewing stuff that you don't expose the passwords. And of course, you know, I I mean, I have a trusted, just like you were talking about with T-Mobile. I mean, the thing is you build a trusted relationship with somebody, but it's quite possible to be able to give someone tech support and never have to see their passwords or divulge any personal information. If you right. know how to set it up right so that your passwords are all just a bunch of dots, then you don't see anything. So that's why I say, you know, help me help you. If you keep your stuff stored in a password manager, I can much more easily help you if all we have to do is just get you to copy and paste things and I can direct you how to go and I never have to see any of your personal information. And right. that is way more comfortable not having to have my eyeballs roll over that stuff. So that's no, what I agree. recommend. And they and they have a built-in tool called Watchtower that will look for oh, compromising yes. mm-hmm. um, uh, passwords, vulnerable passwords, passwords that have been reused, weak passwords. There's a password generator, so you don't even have to come up with a password. I mean, you can have a, a 15 or 15, 12 or 15 character random password. And you don't have to remember it. I mean, although I, I struggle with that sometimes because there are times I have to do it and I want to type it in really quick and then I don't remember it, then I have to go to one password to get it. But... But there are times you want to be able to type it in, so it really depends on how you work. You, but you uh, can do that in one password. You can type right. it into the field. In fact, I've run across a lot of situations where, and a lot of people are surprised to know this. So I'm going to mention it while we're talking about it. Yeah, sure. But there are so many times where you'll come across something. I'll tell you right now, uh, my so, my social security dot gov. I I work with a lot of seniors, so it's something that I have to experience a lot. And they are really, 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 really specific about their password recipe. Right. I mean, it's just it's it's insane how how many lines you have to read just to be able to create a password. Oh, and I so know. even as as savvy as the 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 automated uh, tool that you can use, I always call it the the little safe icon. When you click on that, it'll generate a really secure password for you based on the criteria that you give it. It's called a password recipe. Right. And it's not like you can just say, okay, well, you know, this website requires all this stuff. You have to, you know, adjust the sliders to kind of get it to where you want it to go. But they're very specific specific about which characters you can use. It's not just every character. And so I've come across times where I'll go and I'll adjust the sliders and I'll get it to where I want. I'm like, oh, darn, the ampersand isn't on the list of accepted characters, you know, for example. And so all you have to do is get your cursor into that spot and just change the ampersand to an exclamation point, for example. So you can edit it within the field. A lot of people just don't know that you can do that. And it's like, mind blown emoji, you know, yes, you can actually do that. You can customize that area where you need to type it. You're not just stuck with what it gives you. So try that next time you're struggling yep. with, you know, you have to come up with something really fast and you got to type it in or you, you, the sliders don't give you what you want. Just go in there and click on the field and just put in what you do need. Exactly. So anyway, that that's what I wanted to talk about as far as 1Password. You go to onepassword.com. We'll put a link in the show notes about it. Um, take a check, take a look at it, see what you think. And uh, at least you'll take a definitely, test drive. Or you can you could try it out. Yeah, it's, they do have a try for free uh, for the families too. So you could set it all up and see what you like. And if you like it, yeah, go for it. And like I said, I, I, I think it's well worth it. So, um, but uh, yeah. And then uh, the next topic we want to talk about, you were wanted to talk about photos and we were going to talk about searching photos. And I think that's always a good thing to know because it's always a challenge to find photos. I always have a challenge with it. So speaking of challenges, I challenge our listeners, if you're going to go to one of those 30-minute one-on-one lessons with Apple, (laughs) ask them to show you how to search your photos. And I would be really interested if anybody wants to send us feedback. Our email address is feedback at intouchwithios.com. 
please send us your experiences because I am really interested in knowing what they talk about and what they show you when it comes to searching photos. Now, as you know, uh, Apple offers the Photos app that just comes installed on your phone. And that syncs up if you're also a Mac user, it syncs up to your Photos app, the same name, very, very similar icon on your Macintosh as well. And uh, But you can do a whole lot more in the Mac app than you can do in the iOS app. The iOS app is really powerful, but for someone like me who really likes to tinker, it's still very limited. There's still things that I want to be able to do with it. And that was another thing that they showcased at the last keynote where they were yep. talking about search. But I'm still not happy, Dave. <laughs> it's still not robust enough for yeah. me. You know, I mean, they're they're sure you can do searches of you can say, you know, hey, phone lady, show me pictures of my I think you have to say show me my pictures or show me my photos of and then you can use a subject word. But right now, because it's it's an, what's the word anonymized data or differential mm -hmm. something or other. There's there's a special word for it that I can't remember. In other words, they they were really really quick to point out that they're not like the Googles and the Yahoos. They don't mine your data in order to sell it for ads. They do mine your data, and mine is like a icky kind of word to use. But they do uh, they do capture your data and of course they're really big on you know letting you know what exactly it is but it's really just to be able to serve you up the search the the ability to be able to search your pictures so yes they're not looking at your you know special pictures <laughs> they're not looking at the pictures that you take of you know your rashes and things like that they're they're looking at stuff like mountains and things that have to do with location and gps and all that kind of stuff um, so that you can say, hey, phone lady, show me my pictures of mountain whatever or this location or this place or show me pictures of skateboards or, you know, some word that is very popular. But for me, like I want to be able to say, show me my Halloween pictures. And I've tested this out. I thought that, you know, Halloween should really be something easy to find because it's on the same day every year. So any pictures that I took on Halloween should show up, right? Well, what they don't take into account is that there's usually parades and costume contests and all that kind of stuff that happens the day before or two days before or the day after because, you know, Halloween yeah. isn't always a convenient holiday. It doesn't always fall on a weekend. So that's like one example I will use that I struggle with because it's something that you know, as a mom, like I take lots of Halloween pictures, you know, every year for me, Halloween is a milestone for my kids. You know, every year we celebrate Halloween, we get dressed up in costumes. So when I want to use just that one example of Halloween, what I, my expectation is, is that I'll be able to say, Hey, show me pictures, my pictures of Halloween. And it will be like this, you know, beautiful memory, you know, trip down memory lane of my kids and, of course, now we have the dog and we dress her up too, <laughs> you know, of, of, of just, you know, parties in the of the past or even, you know, maybe pictures that I've modified that maybe were taken with an older digital camera before I started using photos that I've imported or, you know, pictures that I've scanned and, and modified, those sorts of things. I, I don't think it's unreasonable to be able to expect them to be able to have an algorithm that does that. But alas, they don't. And so that's where that's where I get picky about it. So um, I started looking for apps, and the closest that I was able to come is an app called Exif Viewer, and we'll have yep. a link to the show note. Um, did you take a look at this, Dave? Were yeah, you no, able it's to uh, with it? yeah, it's uh, definitely a nice app. It gives you a little more added access to the the different settings that you want to get access to in uh, in, uh, in photos, because that's you know if you know the, what 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 photo do, what happens when you take a photo on your iPhone or, or any camera for that matter. All that EXIF information is put there, and you usually don't see it because it's you know buried deep into the into the into the file. And you and but uh, this this app does definitely gives you the options to be able to make some changes and edits and whatever you want to do. So it makes it easier to find these photos. Yeah, because you, you maybe we should talk a little bit about what EXIF is. Um, do you remember sure. what it stands for? The acronym. 
Uh, I'll let you tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. That's why I was asking you. <laughs> we, Did we'll, you Google it? We'll have a look. At, we'll have a link to it in our show notes so that I'm you kidding. can learn more about it. Um, but it's it's the meta. It's the meta information. It's all of the information that is embedded every time you take a picture. Every it's single time. Changeable it has... image file format. Oh, okay. Thank you, Nerd Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Uh, so it shows you all of the details, you know, the ISO rating, if a flash was fired, what it shows you what model of iPhone it was shot on. I mean, there are just lines and lines and lines of information, probably more than you would ever want to know. But the important thing is that every time you take a picture, it captures the GPS, which is the location of the photo. And right. there are some times where you might want to share something and you don't want people to have that location information so you can use this app to strip that information out or let's say maybe you took a picture of something and it was like a generalized location maybe you didn't have cellular coverage at the time or data coverage that was um, able to show the exact location you can tweak that kind of stuff in this app you can go in and you can actually modify the fields each and every single field now, I have high hopes for this app. Um, it doesn't right now sync with iCloud as far as the stuff that I just explained how picky I am and the kind of stuff that I want in my EXIF data. So, for example, when, you know, this this Halloween's coming up pretty soon here, uh, there's going to be costumes, there's going to be parades, and I'm going to be taking pictures. So what I'm going to want to do is kind of part of my workflow is I'm going to want to tag those pictures, whether they happened on Halloween or not, whether it was a parade or not, I'm going to want to tag them with Halloween as the tag. And I'm going to want to put, you know, notes in there about the costumes the kids wore or any other pertinent details. Or maybe I was out with friends and I want to identify the people in the pictures and that sort of thing. What I really want to be able to do is I want to be able to do all that kind of stuff on my iPhone or my iPad, preferably my iPhone because that's the camera that's in my hand, you know, at the time. I want to be able to do that kind of stuff right there on my iPhone. And what I really want is I want it to be able to show up that way on my Mac when my photos sync across iCloud, because then, and and once everything is in there, then I can do that search that I, that I really want to be able to do. So back to the Halloween example that I was talking about earlier, because I have gone on my Mac and I have gone into those photos and I have added those keywords and I've changed the titles and I've, I've added that kind of information or I've modified the faces, things like that. Because, you know, it, it's a little bit hard when your kids are in makeup and costumes for it to detect the face. Um, it, still, it still works, but there might be some – you might need to help it along just a little bit, <laughs> you yeah. know, when people have uh, prosthetics or not that we've done that. But, I mean, that might be in our future. Who knows? Kids in drama class. Um, that can alter someone's appearance, but you still might want to identify it as that person so you can search for them. Oh, look at, you know, so-and-so was dressed as, you know, whatever. Um, I, I do that stuff on my Mac and then it does sync across iCloud. And then when I do a search, when I tap the little magnifying glass, I can use those, that terminology, or I can say, Hey, phone lady. And then I can get the search results that I want. But see, just like with my password, I've got to roll it myself because <laughs> that's I enjoy doing that. I do not get frustrated by those kinds of things like other people do. And I really just find joy in tinkering with this kind of stuff. So I'm willing to do that work, but I would really like to be able to do it in iOS natively. And so this EXIF viewer app is as close as you can get to being able to modify that stuff. The only problem is it just doesn't sync to iCloud just yet. Maybe that will happen in the future if Apple opens up an API or makes any changes. I mean, it's going to be up to Apple. It's not up to the app developers. This is one of those things where, you know, we were talking about how, um, you know, podcast app developers would really like to be able to put volume control in their app. But up until yeah. recently, Apple, for it was verboten. But so that might be one of these things where they might in the future open this up so that this kind of data will sync. Now, I have been in touch with the developers, and I want to say that they're very responsive. They got back to me right away. We're very, very great about uh, give, you know, answering my questions and giving me the information that I needed. And they did say that when you do put this – when you do modify the data, when you when you modify the the metadata within your pictures, if you use AirDrop to copy a photo or multiple photos to your Mac, mm -hmm. it does sync across. So you could do it that way. Again, like for me, I want to do it on mass. There's a lot of photos that I want to be able to edit. So if you're just doing, 
you know, maybe you have an activity and you want to be able to share these photos with other people. And, you know, maybe you have a particular job or workflow that you have where you need to identify stuff within photos, then this is great because you can do it on your iOS device and then you can airdrop it to your computer and, you know, you can probably batch process it somehow and it'll work that way. So like I said, this is like, this is getting closer to what I want. Um, the future isn't here yet. But that's up to Apple. <laughs> but this is as close as you're going to get, I think, as far as an app that will help you control the the metadata that's in your pictures. But also it educates you and, and it tells you all this different stuff about your pictures. And it's fascinating. It's, yeah. just, it's just really fascinating to look at all of the information that is captured in one single photo, even if it was like a mistake, you know. <laughs> you know so imagine the beautiful photos that people take and you can see all of the, the details about it. It's just a really yeah, great way crazy. to learn about, uh, learn about your pictures and the quality of the photos that you take and kind of really interact with your albums and things like that. And it's a, it's a good way to help you learn how to get organized. So I encourage people to check it out. Um, it does have a nice like share feature so you can um, tap on the share icon and then the share sheet will come up and you can export it you can work within it that way you can edit the information um, I think if you go to their developer page they're called Fluntro and I apologize if I just butchered the name or the pron pronunciation of it but yep. yep it's called Exif Viewer so they do have a they do have a light version that you can try before you buy because this one's a couple bucks uh, but I think it's worth it so it I is worth it I encourage you to check it, it out I bought it, and yeah, you look you look at some of the information that's in here. It's yeah, it's I agree with you. It's pretty incredible. I mean, it's some of the stuff you don't ever see when you get the photos. I mean, telling me, you know, the photo I took with my iPhone 10 and what the aperture was, how much, uh, what the ISO is, and what the focal length was, and if the flash was taken or not. I mean, just endless amounts of information. It would be really cool it. to see since it tells you which model it is, and since you you're the type of person that upgrades so frequently, it would be really awesome if you we're able to capture, you should maybe start doing this now. This is an idea. Find something, a picture or a place that you take pictures of regularly and then go through and do a search for the model of the phone and then compare them side by side and yeah. see, you know, over time what the quality, like how the quality has improved over time from model to model to model. I think that would be really cool. So it's really no, helpful for, there. you know, photographers, iPhone photographers out there. I agree with you. So, uh, yeah, and uh, unless you had anything else you wanted to hit on, um, there was a, I had, I had a couple apps I was going to touch upon. Oh, cool. One of them was, one of them was called PixFood. I don't oh, know if boy. you're familiar with this one. Oh, I'm glad I'm going to go eat after you tell me about this. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, it's pretty cool, actually. What it does is, it, I mean, it, it's definitely cross-sourced. It's it's social type of, of app. Uh, you take a photo of any ingredient, so like in the, in the case of the example of the f that's in, in the, the link that we have for, uh, for the, to the App Store, um, and um, like in this case, it's a picture of a piece of salmon, and then mm -hmm. it'll confirm the match, what it is, and says, oh, this is salmon, and then it'll, it'll uh, give you the instant tasty recipe suggestions oh, on boy. it. So, <laughs> well, my husband's going to love this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So He's the foodie. So, I'll have to show this to him. Yeah, so you just take any photo and what you, what you, whatever you want to cook, and and it'll find the recipe for you. And, and uh, again, with me not being the the greatest of cooks, if if not cooked at all, I mean, I just had leftovers from Olive Garden last night. So, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's something that, that potentially could could make it a lot more fun uh, to cook. And and uh, it's got some mixed reviews, but uh, I mean, I've been playing around with it for a little while, and uh, no, I thought it was pretty cool. It's uh, so it's Pix Food, P I X Food. Uh, it's in the App Store. We'll have a link to it in the show notes, of course. And uh, we'll want to check that out. This, um, is, this is great for people who are like, I don't know what to make. I can't think. And everybody yeah, stops exactly. talking to me. You open up the fridge and you're like, all right, take a picture of that. Take a picture of that. All right, what can I make? <laughs> See, now my husband just knows how to do this naturally. Like he can just pull ingredients out of the air yeah. and just poof, you know, he's got a meal on the table. He's better than I, me. Just, I just, that was not part of my genetic code and I'm an embarrassment to my Italian family, but hey, good thing we have apps to help us out, right? <laughs> there you go. So, and then uh, the other two apps I had actually related to T-Mobile again. I'm going to keep bat beating up, uh, <laughs> beating up all talk about T-Mobile, but uh, they, their T-Mobile Tuesdays app is pretty cool. Um, You can set it to... Uh, to, to notify you each week when the, on Tuesdays, uh, today is Tuesday when we recorded this episode. So, uh, all the freebies were, uh, were, were announced. And then, and then of course this week it was uh, Pandora plus for a year for free. And then um, there was, uh, 
I believe a, give, a giveaway for uh, uh, fuel rewards, uh, show, uh, shell, uh, gas, 25 cents off uh, a gallon. Uh, so each week they have all kinds of little, little perks here and there. And uh, like I said last, at the beginning of the last week, they had a little little uh, case you could buy. It was a really cheap case, honestly. <laughs> but I, 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 and I go all the way to, 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 to the T-Mobile store. And yeah, like I said, I was I got a, the last one before the lady behind me didn't get one. So <laughs> it was kind of gratifying. <laughs> Funny. Oh no! I'm actually using it to put. I put all my phones, the phones that I use, like for for, for testing. So, because so, it has a team. Sending you we'll out to do my it, so. Black Friday shopping, Dave. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, I mean, but they have a lot of great, uh, great giveaways, and 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 that's what's kind of neat about T-Mobile and uh, having that app. And every every April, if you uh, if you're a, ba- a baseball fan, the MLB at bat, uh, we they had. Uh, uh, they give that uh, away for free for the whole season, and that's like a two hundred dollar value, which is wow. pretty awesome. You know, the Pandora was was worth sixty bucks by itself yeah, there, right. and uh, yeah, I see Baskin Robbins, I see Red Box, I've got movies, tickets. I mean, they have a thing now with Live Nation with with the concerts, twenty five dollar tickets to go to concerts to some some big you know some big name acts. Um, so uh, T Mobile obviously is partnering with a lot of uh, with a lot, a lot of different. Uh, vendors and uh and having a lot of fun with it and then the t-mobile app itself that manages your account very very straightforward works great with face id and touch id gets you into the app real quickly uh very easy to get to the chat uh, very easy to navigate and look at all your devices on your account and look at your bill um they've they've really done a really good job of uh, making it really super easy to uh to manage uh to manage your bill and uh, to get uh, everything you want to know about your account so well i hope somebody's listening to this podcast <laughs> From T-Mobile. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I doubt it. But you know what else starts really with T? <laughs> you know what would sound really good with T-Mobile is T-Mobile teachers. Just throwing that there out know. there. Just throwing that out there. Well, no, I'll also throw that out there too. If you are if you are a veteran, they do give fifty percent off your bill. So mm, if you are, wow, fifty percent is pretty good. If you're a veteran uh, with from the armed 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 forces, yep, they 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 take care of our vets. So that's great. Uh, Make sure you that that alone might be a reason why I subscribe and yeah. switch. So, anyway, before we wrap this up, I wanted to mention also uh, Max Stock. The digital pass is still available out there, um, and we have a link to the in the show notes for that. Max Stock uh, Conference and Expo dot com slash digital dash pass. Um, all the videos are uploaded and ready to go, and uh, you can watch uh, my deeper dive as well as uh, my presentation for twenty minutes, as well as all the content that was out there for Max Stock uh, for this. Uh, this past uh, the conference, which was awesome, um, and it's it's worth worth the weight in gold for the amount that uh, that uh, they're charging for. It's only seventy nine bucks, and uh, you can uh, you definitely can uh, get 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 access to the to, to all the videos and be able to watch all the watch them um, in your PJs. Yeah, you could, and then uh, and Mike Potter the uh, he he uh, edited the videos in such a way where. It was like you were there. I mean, oh. you, you you hear all the banter between between sessions, and you hear the, the the camera's still on when he's getting everybody ready and switched over. So it's, it's it made you kind of feel like you were there. So I thought it was a great concept that he did with this, and I uh, was very super pleased with uh, uh, the way the videos came out because it was a lot of fun. So uh, and uh, we'll look forward to next year too. So, but anyway, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll definitely be looking forward to uh, all the stuff that's coming out. Uh, pretty soon here with apple in uh in september and uh we'll be very close to that very soon we're almost to the labor day weekend here and uh yeah lots of things will be coming up here soon but uh, i think yeah, we'll uh, be back it, with more information on that lots more stuff that, uh, coming up so but i think this is a good time to wrap things up yep i think we'll put a bow on it right here so thanks for listening and we hope you're more in touch with ios after hearing this episode subscribe to our podcast in your favorite podcatcher and show your friends how to find us on apple Podcasts on the Google Play Store, and on Stitcher Radio. We look forward to bringing you more useful information in the future episodes. I'm Melissa Davis, and you can find me online all over at The Mac Mommy. And I am Dave Ginsberg, and I am on Twitter at DaveG65. Great. Well, we hope you'll subscribe for future episodes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>